Hi, everyone. This is Mickey Tsaka, BCG's Chief Alumni Officer, welcoming you to our fourth episode of BCG Alumni Leaders. Today, I am thrilled to be joined by Lisa Dyson. She was a consultant in an Atlanta office in 2004 through 2006. She is now a member of our alumni community in the Bay Area, and Lisa is the CEO of Air Protein. We're also proud to call Lisa a former TED at BCG speaker too. We celebrated our 10th anniversary with TED, but I still remember the talk she gave five years ago around a very successful talk about how a forgotten space age technology could change how we make food. So today we'll be chatting with her about her career path, diversity, equity, and inclusion, and leading in the new reality. But let's get started by first asking Lisa, so what do you do? What is Air Protein all about? Wonderful, I will step and start there. So I am one of the founders of Air Protein and excited to be a part of changing the way that we make meat. So we are building a modern meat company, Air Protein, and the way that we do it is based off of work that was done by NASA during the space program, where they had to ask the question, how do you feed astronauts in long space journeys? And it turns out that that's the same question as how do you recycle carbon dioxide? And it's because we're a carbon-based life form, we get our carbon through our food and we need it to survive. And so what we've developed at Air Protein is a novel, unique way to make protein from elements of the air. And then we take that protein as a, the process that we use is very similar to making yogurt or brewing beer, a process called fermentation, very similar to fermentation. Uh, and then we add culinary techniques to that to create the same experience that you get when you bite into a juicy steak or a chicken breast. And we do it in a way that uses a fraction of the resources and is the most sustainable way to make protein on the planet. I think that just sounds so fascinating. I know that April was Earth Day month, and I've seen your posts about all the activities in your companies, but what is it that you see now coming up in terms of how all of us as organizations and individuals can con contribute to a more sustainable future? And what are the industry trends that you're looking at in particular as we try to survive and thrive in the next decade? Good, good question there. And, you know, we, we, one of the main drivers behind air protein is climate change. And it turns out that the food industry is one of the largest contributors of greenhouse gases to the environment. Uh, in fact, contributing more greenhouse gases than the entire transportation sector. And so that's one area that we can look at uh, in terms of the impact that we can have. And happily, there are a lot of organizations that have been looking at that over the years and have now pledged to get to net zero within some time frame that's not too far off. And so we're happy that that is becoming an industry trend, that companies are beginning to look at their carbon footprint and beginning to figure out ways that they can offset that carbon footprint or make changes in how they produce. Uh, and so we see these net zero um, commitments from companies like uh, you know, Pepsi, um, Amazon, across the board, a number of different companies in different industries. And so that's an exciting trend that we're, we're seeing. Fantastic. Um, maybe now shifting gears a bit, I wonder how um, you think about, again, organizations as and companies can make a step change in diversity, um, equity and inclusion, both committing to it and accelerating it, because I think we all believe that there just isn't yet quite enough of it going around. What are your views on that? So one of the investors in Curverti, and by virtue of the fact that, that Air Protein is a subsidiary of Curverti, an investor in Air Protein, Kpor Capital, they have as a requirement for companies mm. that come into their portfolio that they have to make a founder's commitment. And that commitment is to build an organization that is diverse and inclusive from the start. And so they actually have a number of different suggestions and principles and tools uh, for companies as they're building from scratch to create companies that from the, the beginning, their boardroom, their management teams, their entire staff really embrace diversity and inclusion. And so one of the things that I, I'd say that is important uh, in any organization is to make sure that the leadership is bought in to the importance of having a diverse organization. We know that the data shows that diverse organizations do have great performance. You look at the boardroom and if you have diverse boards, you have better performance across the board. Uh, and so, you know, for organizations to really uh, embrace that and embrace inclusion as being a, a, a operating principle, as it were, uh, and then to get people or a person, a chief people officer, someone who's leading the organization in terms of the people and the talent to really implement, you know, uh, different uh, 
on systems in terms of recruiting, in terms of how you reward people, um, you know, having sponsors throughout the organization to make sure that everyone feels like this is a great place to work and they belong when they show up. Fantastic. Um, maybe a bit of a personal question then, Lisa, if it's okay. I do wonder, um, you've had an, an incredible career so far and I can't wait to see what comes next, but what are some of the challenges you faced as a leader and how did you overcome those challenges? Hmm. Well, well, definitely there's a lot of challenges that one faces as a leader. Uh, I'd say one thing that stands out in, in particularly as an entrepreneur, so that's really where I've hmm. um, really focused the last um, decade or so of my, my life is really building things from scratch, coming up with ideas and then creating um, you know, businesses out of them. And one of the things that I had to face at some point was to basically cannibalize uh, an offering that we, we had. Uh, and that was because the market dynamics were shifting and um, it was required to do that. When we started Kiverti, myself and Dr. John Lee, my co-founder, you know, mm -hmm. we were excited about fuel and making fuel as the, the goal of the company. And unfortunately, the, the price of fuel plummeted. The first day that we made a uh, jet fuel component, we were super excited. And that was an amazing day. Uh, and we were really working on that technology. But unfortunately, the, the market shifted and the funding mm -hmm. for startups really kind of dried up uh, significantly. And so we had to pivot and we had to find kind of another market that would take our technology. And happily, because of that pivot, we were actually able to create a platform, a technology platform where we could take CO2 and make an abundance of products from that CO2, uh, oils that go into everyday products like soaps, lotions, detergents, uh, ultimately protein. Uh, and then that led us to ultimately create a new company called Air Protein, focused on the future of meat. Uh, so I think when you have to essentially walk away from something that you're passionate about, yeah. it can open doors and take you to something that might even, even be even bigger than you would have imagined. Those are great lessons. My final question, Lisa, is if you think back, I wonder if you can share what the best piece of career advice uh, that you might have gotten over the years, whether from BCG or anywhere else, it would be great to hear your concluding thoughts mm -hmm. about career advice. Well, one thing that I loved about BCG is just that it's such a learning organization. There's feedback loops that are happening constantly, whether mm -hmm. it's immediately on projects, whether it's at the end of projects, whether you have mentors, um, various, various people that are made available to you by the organization to help you learn and grow. And that's an important lesson for me, just how, um, you know, the people around us, every, basically everyone is an expert at something or knows more about something than I do. Uh, and really approaching people that way and finding out, you know, how, uh, you know, about this person's life experiences and how those life experiences could could be leveraged really to help me grow. And, and of course I have to give as well. How do I give of what I've learned and my experiences to those around me, my colleagues, my peers, uh, people that I mentor as well. So I think it's really just about leveraging your colleagues, finding mm. sponsors, getting mentors. These are things that are really crucial, uh, I think in anyone's career. And then when I started Kiverti and then ultimately Air Protein, one way that that revealed itself was just to surround myself by advisors. So I found people that were experts at building companies, experts at fundraising, experts at uh, closing deals, whatever it was that was needed uh, to build a successful company. You know, I went out and found several advisors in those different areas and happily people were and continue to be really willing to contribute, mm -hmm. you know, their uh, knowledge uh, to help others and lend a help, helping hand. So I would say that's a critical thing that was an integral part of my BCG experience that I've gone on to implement throughout my career afterwards. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts, your wisdom, your experiences, your advice. Um, I've been really enjoyed all of your stories. So thank you for joining us today. I hope all of you enjoyed this chat with Lisa as much as I have. And please do join us for next month's episode of PCG Alumni Leaders as well. Thank you. Mm -hmm.